Hi all. So um, we in the geography department wanted to, um, to help you a little bit with your year 11 cap preparation. So to do that, we've sort of outlined some top tips in terms of geography revision. Um, now you can see the three topics that you will be covering on your mock exam. So you've got the challenge of natural hazards, urban issues and challenges, and also global resource management. What I do want to make you aware of is all three of those topics, especially the first two, are very um, in-depth um, topics. So there is a lot of information that needs to be covered. So, for example, in the challenge of natural hazards, you not only have tectonics, but you also have weather hazards. So your tectonics case studies in that instance were L'Aquila in Italy and also the Gorkhanapal earthquake. But then when you flick to the weather hazards, you had Typhoon Haiyan and you also had um, the Cumbrian floods. So please do make sure that you cover all case studies in each one. For urban issues and challenges, um, we did looked at Lagos and we looked at Leeds as well. And you, not only did you just look at the cities, you looked at their use of um, controlling traffic, controlling their water supply and so on. So please do make sure that you go back through and you have a look at each of those. For global resource management, you did an overview of food, energy and water, but then your main focus was water. So please make sure you are revising the water element of that unit. So to start off with, um, these are our top tips. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about spider diagrams, revision clocks and flashcards, some knowledge organisers, your exam technique, some past paper practice questions and your use of GCSE pod. Some of you are using that amazingly well and some of you I think have sort of switched off from it when actually it's a really good resource that you can be using um, particularly for your revision. So to start us off, um, so the three areas of things that you guys can actually be doing, so you've got spider diagrams, it says they are an invaluable revision tool, uh, ideal for visual learners. They help you to represent uh, connections between ideas and facts in a clear and memorable way. You could do a spider diagram for one case study and put all the facts and information off um, the middle of the spider diagram, or you could do it per topic. Um, so do have a think about how you want to use that very effectively. Um, revision clocks, great way of breaking down information into 12 manageable chunks. Um, how are they useful? By breaking down an area you are revising, it allows you to see the big picture as well as focus on the important aspects of the unit. And then you've also got flashcards, great revision tool and they should be used along with other revision techniques such as your mind maps, maybe revision clocks, quizzes, exam questions and so on. So I'm going to go through each one. Um, and just show you how some students have set them out already and just how you can use them a little bit more effectively. So, for example, I've put a very simple how to mind map um, sort of slide just so that you can see um, how you actually use them effectively. A lot of the time people just write on a lot of information and then they don't go back to it. So make sure you are using colour, make sure you are using symbols to represent different things and um, make sure it's very clear. So each heading that you've got off. So, for example, if I was to do um, the L'Aquila Italy um, case study as my spider diagram, I would make sure I had clear lines leading to primary effects. Then I had a line going to secondary effects, maybe the causes, the responses, so your immediate and long term responses and so on. And I would make sure that I've used colour to just highlight all these different areas. OK? Um, there are some other ways that you can do it. So there's the main topic and then you've got the subtopics at the top and also at the bottom. And then you've got different key ideas from the subtopics. So, for example, you could have the challenge of natural hazards, which is your main topic. And then one of those subtopics could be tectonic hazards. One of them could be weather hazards and one of them could be climate change because you also cover climate change within that topic. And then put all 